Hi there, this is Sam, coming to you from Southern California, where the weather is definitely cool. We had a lot of rain recently. I don't have the AC on in my apartment, which is unusual because it's almost always on. This is the 27th episode of the Victor Prep Vocab Podcast, and hello to you all, wherever you, <laughs> wherever you may be, from almost any country around the world. Because I get emails from people in India, Taiwan, China, Nepal, everywhere. So if you are listening to this podcast from somewhere very far off and unusual, please send me an email and tell me where you're from. Because I always love that. It's great to hear from some of those people who are really in very cool and exotic places. At least exotic to me. Maybe it's boring to you. <laughs> anyway, let's get started by reviewing the Words from episode 26. Those were ardor, ardor, that means passion, great enthusiasm, warmth of feeling. Rustic, rustic, that means relating to the countryside or rural. It can also mean having a simplicity and charm that's associated with the countryside. Irascible, irascible, that means irate, angry, irritable. And our final word from last time was parry, parry. Now, that means to ward off an attack, usually a blocking with a sword, something like that. It can also mean verbal parrying, an act of conversational wit. Avoiding a question in a clever way, or being evasive. Those were our words from last time. Let's move on to the new words. Our first word is exacerbate. Exacerbate. That is spelled E-X-A, exa, C-E-R, sir, bait, B-A-T-E, exacerbate. Exacerbate is a verb, and it means basically to make something worse, to make something more severe. It's often used with feelings or an illness or a disease. So you could say something like, the symptoms of my cold were exacerbated by jumping into the freezing cold lake. So you're saying that the symptoms of your cold were made worse or more severe. So yes, you'll often hear the word exacerbate used referring to an illness. So the illness has been made worse, or the symptoms have been made worse, or exacerbated. Or you could make someone angrier. So if someone's already in a bad mood, you could exacerbate that bad mood, make it worse by being mean to them, for example. Some synonyms are aggravate, worsen, inflame, or compound. You might think of the word exaggerate. If you exaggerate something, you make it seem bigger than it is. If I exaggerate the size of my house, I've made my house seem to my friends maybe that it's way bigger than it actually is. So you could remember ex <laughs> exacerbate by thinking of exaggerate. It sounds a bit similar. Exacerbate is making something worse, more severe. So, exaggerate is also making something sound bigger or more exaggerated. So, that might be a good way of remembering exacerbate. Our second word is pungent. Pungent. That's spelled P-U-N, pun, G-E-N-T, gent, pungent. It's an adjective, and it means a really bad smell or extremely nasty taste. So you could say that wine smells pungent. It means a strong, sharp, biting smell. Almost, could almost be acidic. Some synonyms of pungent are caustic, biting, cutting, bitter, tart, sharp. However, pungent doesn't have to refer to a smell or a taste. It could also be someone's behavior. 
someone could make a pungent comment to you. A pungent comment would be one that which was extremely sarcastic or sardonic or scathing. An extremely sharp and mean comment could be described as being pungent. But I would say the grand majority of the time, pungent is referring to a bad smell. Yes, it can be taste too, but really, more often than not, it's going to be a smell, a pungent smell. Our third word is upbraid. Upbraid. It's spelled U-P, up. B-R-A-I-D, braid, upbraid. Now, upbraid is a verb, and it means to find fault with someone, or to rebuke or scold someone. So, often upbraid is used in the sense that someone has done something bad, and someone else is telling them off for doing something bad. So, if you were at school, and you tried to sneak off for half of the day, and you got caught by the teacher, the teacher might upbraid you for doing it. They have found fault with you, they are reproaching you severely. It's quite a strong word, not as strong as some other words, but medium strength. It's not as strong as, for example, castigate, I don't think, but it's more strong than a word like chide, which means a gentle sort of scolding. But some synonyms are reprimand, rebuke, admonish, chastise, reproach, scold, lambast, or berate. So I was curious about the origin of this word because it didn't sound to me like one that had a Roman origin, like most of our words, or a Greek origin. And in fact, upbraid does have an Old English origin. It comes from a word upbreeden, which apparently means to allege something as a basis for censure. Well, okay then. <laughs> that doesn't help us <laughs> with word roots at all. So I can't think of a really good way of remembering upbraid. I did think of a girl using her braids to whip someone because they'd been bad. So maybe you could remember using that. <laughs> maybe. Or think of a better way. If you do think of a really good way of remembering upbraid, then let me know. <laughs> Our final word for today is surly. Surly. That is spelled S-U-R, sir, L-Y, Lee, surly. Surly means rude or bad-tempered. And you might be saying, Sam, we did irascible recently. How is surly different from irascible? Well, irascible is a strong word. Extremely strong, extremely angry person, irritable. Surly is less strong than irascible. Surly means someone who is just a bit bad-tempered, they're a bit quiet and maybe purposefully ignoring you. They're purposefully being a bit rude. Someone who is irascible might just crazily shout at you because they're so irritable, but someone who's surly might just ignore you because they're in a bad temper. So it's, it's less strong. It can mean unfriendly or irritable too, but it also means moody, sour, unfriendly, unsmiling, scowling. So I'm sure you can think of someone who's irascible, they get angry easily, and someone who's just surly, so then they get moody often, or sulky, or sullen. So there is a definite difference in meaning there. At the base level, they're meaning something similar, but sullen does imply more of bad moods, whereas irascible implies Really, someone getting hot and angry and maybe shouting a little bit too. Those were our four words, so let's quickly review them. Exacerbate. Exacerbate means to increase the severity or bitterness or violence of something. Usually a disease or an ill feeling. Pungent. Pungent means extremely biting or bitter smell or a taste, can also mean a pungent 
remark from someone, which is a really mean, biting remark. Upbraid. Upbraid. That means to find fault with, to reprimand someone, or tell someone they've been bad. Surly. That means rude, or bad-tempered, moody, or unfriendly. So, now it's time to go over our example sentences. If this is your first time, welcome. The example sentences are sentences that refer to each word from today, but without using the word. And it's up to you to work out which word I'm referring to. My clothes never smelled clean again after being sprayed by a skunk, even after washing them five times. The boy was scolded severely for dyeing the school swimming pool purple. Jeff thought he had a problem when he got a flat tire while driving through the forest. However, his situation got much worse when he realized his phone was out of batteries. Everyone thought the lion was merely bad-tempered, until someone discovered a thorn stuck in his paw. After it was removed, he gambled around like a kitten. Those were our sentences for today. Just a tip that I haven't covered in a while. Please, 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 if you want to remember these words, make up some example sentences for yourself. This is really, really important, because you need to be an active learner if you want to remember the words. It does help to listen to me talking about them, but you should use my podcasts in an active way. That is, pause them and test yourself. When I'm doing my little tests at the start of an episode, and when I'm covering the words, you should try and mentally think about the meaning before I give you the answer. That's really going to help. And, I, and making those example sentences and making them weird and wacky and unusual will give your brain lots of information with which to remember those words. So please do that. It's really going to mean you remember these words for five years or ten years or the rest of your life even, rather than just remember them for a few weeks. So please do do that. That is the end of our podcast for today. Thank you all so much. As always, please email me at sam.fold at gmail.com. It's really appreciated. And if you have any comments or ideas for making the podcast better, it will be truly appreciated. And if you like and enjoy the podcast and think it's useful, please tell your friends if, they, if they're studying for the GRE or if they just might be interested in learning new English words. Please let anyone know or like the Facebook page or share the Facebook page. It really does mean a lot to me and you are making a difference because, you know, I really truly believe in this. <laughs> I think it's a really good thing to learn more about the language and to educate yourself. Even if you're not trying to get into college or not studying for the GRE, it's an amazing thing to try and improve yourself like this. So thank you all so much. And please try and spread word about the podcast if you can. Take it easy. Um, I'm going to bed. Bye-bye.